In this video, we're going to cover some uh, of the very basic features in the Lightburn user interface. Just give you a quick idea of how to set up a job, get going, change your layer settings, cut settings, things like that. So if you've never run Lightburn before, we have a previous video that shows you how to set up your device. This video is assuming that you've already done that. So I have my device here chosen. I'm using a Ruida 6442. If you have another device, you'll see a different name here. The options presented to you in the user interface may be slightly different depending on the type of controller that you have. If your UI looks a little bit different than mine, don't panic. For example, if I choose Smoothieware, these options over here change slightly and I get uh, a new option to go to the origin, my send file option changes, and so on. The UI in Lightburn adapts to the type of controller that you have, so this is normal and expected. Basic creation tools are here along this side. This is by default. They can be moved if you want to put them somewhere else. For example, if I wanted to put them down here, I could do that. Um, my preference is over here. That's the Lightburn default. There's no reason you can't change those if you don't like them there. Over here we have the cut settings. Down here is the laser control panel. Um, and then this status bar shows you kind of live updates for what you're doing in the edit window, which is this grid in the middle. Um, and then here, these colors are um, representative of your cut settings. So in Lightburn and with pretty much any laser, you don't have color output to the laser. So we use colors to denote different types of settings. So for example, I'm going to draw a couple of squares, rectangles. This one, I'm going to change to a different color. So while it is selected, I'm going to change it to blue. I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to unselect it. And then I'm going to change this one up here now by selecting it first and then clicking down here to red. So what have I done? This, this first rectangle is over here. It is a line. These are the settings. Now right now, because this is the first time that I've ever run Lightburn, um, all of my settings are defaults. Um, if I want to change the speed or the mode with which this thing is executed, I can change the basic settings down here. So I'm going to say I want to cut this black rectangle at 200 millimeters a second. I'm going to do the blue one at 150 millimeters per second. And then I'm going to do this red one at 100 millimeters per second. You can also change the style. So the mode up here is line, meaning that it's going to run the laser around the line or directly on the line of the object I've created. Um, you can do fill, which means that the laser is going to scan back and forth and fill the area of this shape. Or you can do fill plus line, which means that the laser is going to fill the shape first and then run around the outline. And we can see these different operations if we use the preview. So I'm going to click this monitor button. You can also click Alt P. That will bring up the preview window. Um, and if I move the slider, you can watch um, the path that the laser is going to take. Um, you can also hit play and watch the little crosshair indicating the position of the laser. You can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel. You can pan by clicking and dragging in this window. If I uh, double click, it resets to see the entire project. And I can stop playing, grab the slider bar and move it around to see various uh, points in the cutting plan that it's made. Um, so if I zoom in on this one, you can see that there is an outline around this. Uh, these edges are closed. If I look at the one below it, um, these edges have a little red line connecting them and that's uh, a traversal line. So you'll notice that when I'm zoomed out, these lines here are showing the path that the laser is taking to get from where it started to the beginning of this shape, um, then to the beginning of that shape, and so on. So those are the traversal lines. Those are the moves the laser makes in between cuts. 
you can turn those off if you want to see a, a pure version of your preview. Um, but they're useful to see what path the laser is going to take. After you've previewed a job and you want to send it to the laser, the normal way to do this is to just click start. That will execute it on the machine. I can hit stop and it will stop it. If you um, change art, uh, for example, I can group these items together. They now have a slightly different marquee pattern. You can see the dash dot dot pattern. That's telling me that these shapes are grouped. If I try to click one of them, I get all of them. They are treated now as a single entity when I'm trying to edit, resize, rotate, anything like that. Quick note here, you'll notice that when I rotated, I decided I didn't like it. I hit Control Z to undo. You can also uh, go to the menu here and undo. When rotating or dragging, um, you can press the modifier keys on the keyboard to change the behavior. So right now when I'm dragging the size of these, um, you'll notice that the aspect ratio is locked. If I wanted to drag just the height, I can do it here, or just the width, I can do it here. If I wanted to drag both of those things together, it's not letting me, but clicking the shift key unlocks that aspect lock. And so now I can drag this corner and change it however I like. Pressing the control key makes it happen from center outward, and just the control key by itself is aspect locked and scaling from center out. Uh, similarly, when you are using the rotate feature, if you press the control key, it snaps it to five degree increments. And if you look at the bottom down here when I'm dragging, uh, when I'm rotating, you can see the angle that I'm rotating to. So I'm gonna snap it back at 90 degrees. That status bar on the bottom will also show you, for example, the length of a line when you're dragging it. Um, so you can see down here this length value. That's how long this line is. If I press the shift key, it will lock the line to be either horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And by default, Lightburn will attempt to snap to other objects. So vertexes on other objects like this, you'll notice that I'm snapping to that corner or snapping to that corner. If I don't want that behavior, pressing the control key will turn that off. So I'm now holding the control key and you'll notice that as I move around here, I'm not snapping to my grid, which would normally happen. Holding the control key bypasses the grid snap and bypasses the corner snap. If I get close to a corner, it snaps to the corner. Otherwise, it's trying to snap me to my grid, which right now is set to one millimeter increments. Um, I'm going to clear this out, select all of these and delete them. The deletion is the trash can there on the, uh, on the toolbar, or you can just hit the backspace key. I'm going to import something. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can go import here from the menu. You can click the import button up here on the toolbar, or you can press the import hotkey, which is control I. I have some files set up here. Um, let me bring in this box. So this box came in as a group. So you'll notice that the marquee pattern, as I mentioned before, is dash, da or dash dot dot dash dot dot. That means that this object is grouped. So if I try to select it and move it or change it or do anything, it's treated as all one piece. You'll also notice that the ungroup option is available to me. So if I click ungroup, now this object is not one large group anymore, but you can see that some of these pieces are still groups and I still have the ungroup option. At this point, the groups here that I'm looking at are from the original file. So if this was an Adobe Illustrator file or an SVG file from Inkscape, objects from those files may be grouped in that software. And so now the groups that I'm seeing here came from that. In this case, this file is actually a whole bunch of small pieces that can all be interacted with, and it was grouped to keep them together. So I'm going to undo my turning off the group so that it's 
back to being pieces that I can manipulate. To change the layers assigned to objects, I can select those objects like this and then select a palette entry on the bottom. So if I want to change this to a different cut layer with different settings, you simply choose a palette entry on the bottom uh, and it will reassign the selection to that new color and give it a new set of settings. If you want to select everything on a particular layer, you can press the shift key and click on the layer here. That will select all of the items that are on that layer. If you want to see what's on a particular layer, you can right click on this and it will flash the items on that layer for you. So again, holding the shift key and single clicking will select them. Just right clicking here will blink them so you can see what is on that layer. Again, import, you can click here. Um, there are also other ways to import artwork. For example, if I want to bring something in just from Windows, um, you can simply drag it out of your Windows Explorer onto Lightburn. That also does an import, and that is usually an easier way to do it. If I drag a Lightburn file onto it, um, it's going to tell me, hey, you haven't saved this project, do you want to? It's opening up this new project for me. Individual pieces can be brought in like that. So uh, again, JPEG files, like an image file, vector files, you can bring all of them in together. You will notice that when I brought in this image, I get an image mode here. The thing that I'm going to show you next applies to any type of file um, or any type of cut layer. When you have an object in Lightburn. So for example, I'm going to do a blue fill layer here. I have the option to change this from fill to line or fill plus line. With the image, I don't have the option to change it because it is just an image. It's always going to be an image. If I double click the entry over here, I get the larger set of cut settings that are available to me for that object. So I can choose how it is filled. I can change back to a line and then choose how Lightburn is going to process that line. For an image object, if I double click here, I get the settings that are relevant to images. So um, which dithering mode it's going to use, what dots per inch setting it's going to use, speed, power, so on and so on. Those settings are only available if you do a double click and bring up this larger cut settings box. The quick settings for just speed and power and interval are down here. You can also manipulate objects somewhat up here. Um, you can change the position of the object, the width and height of the object, or you can scale with percentages. You can also choose how the scaling happens. So for example, if I wanted to scale from the middle, that's the default. But if I wanted to scale it from that upper corner, I can click here. That also changes how the positioning works as well. So right now, by default, the position is where that center point is. And here you can see it's 460 by, or by 89. If I click up here, this is where that upper left corner is. If I click down here, this is where the lower right corner is. And so if I decide that I wanted to position this object at my origin, which is down here, I select this lower left corner and change it to zero, zero. And now the lower left corner of my object is at zero, zero, the origin. If I change the width or height, I'm scaling from that lower left corner. If I now wanted to scale from the upper right corner, for example, I could change that to 150. And now I'm scaling from that upper right corner. So briefly, again, recap, double click over here to open up the settings for that particular cut layer. To change which layer you're using, click a palette entry along the bottom with a graphic selected. Um, to ungroup things that have come in when importing, select your items and click the ungroup button, um, or just uh, You'll see over here, where is it? 
there we go, in the Arrange menu. Group and Ungroup are right here, so you can use these. You can use the shortcut keys, Control u and Control g are how I normally do it. There are multiple ways to do most things in Lightburn. It's mostly based on your familiarity and comfort level. Um, I'm also going to show one last thing, and that is selection. Most of the time when you select, you'll just click an object, and that will select it for you. If you click and hold, I can drag immediately, um, so I don't have to select it first and then drag. Um, I can drag from anywhere on an object. There's also bandbox selection, so that is where you grab and drag out without clicking on a particular part of an object. When I let go of this band box, the red box will select anything that it surrounds. If I click and drag from left to right, it's a red band box. That's called an enclosing selection. If I click and drag from right to left, I get a green box, and this is called a crossing selection. And a crossing selection is going to grab anything it touches. So even if I just nick this, it selects that object. If I just touch both of these, it will select both of those. You can see that the telephone bitmap is selected as well. This is very useful for selecting individual things. So for example here, because this is all one large group, I can't just select this little square. But if I use the crossing selection, and it catches that, it selects the whole thing. I think that's enough for now. We'll cover more of the drawing tools and so on in other videos. Thanks for watching.